we are the only country in the world where you elect your chief law enforcement officer. Now, why is that important to the people? Because we are the only law enforcement that works directly for the citizens. I don't work for the commissioners. I don't work for the judges. I don't work for the prosecutor. I don't work for the governor. I don't work for the president. I work for the 128,400 people in Wood County. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Today we have a special guest, Sheriff Mark Vasilishin, Sheriff of Wood County, Ohio, also a member of the Board of Directors of the National Sheriff's Association, who chairs its Crime Prevention and Privacy Security Committee, and also serves on several other of its national committees. Sheriff Mark Vasilishin is here to give us an insider's view of some of the aspects of how partnership between individuals and their county sheriffs can improve their security, their ability to protect and preserve their rights and of their home and their family, keep themselves safe and help others stay safe around them. Welcome to our channel, Sheriff Mark. Well, thank you very much. I uh, enjoy being on and look forward to uh, speaking with your viewers. One of the first questions when I heard you at a recent speech that you gave about public safety was an awareness you shared about whom your sheriff actually works for. I thought it was remarkable because a lot of the people who we've talked with about home preparedness are uh, taking into their own hands uh, measures to increase their family security and safety and uh, not always expecting that law enforcement, for example, will be available at times of crisis or times that they may be needed. So they're trying to increase, seeing what they can do on their own as well. But uh, you gave a insight into who does your county sheriff actually work for that I thought was eye-opening. Could you share that with our listeners? Absolutely. Uh, we are, sheriffs are very unique. Most states, uh, the sheriff is elected. And in most states, the sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer. So the uniqueness is uh, we are the only law enforcement that is elected in our country and more and equally important. We are the only country in the world, and I'm going to repeat that, we are the only country in the world where you elect your chief law enforcement officer. Now, why is that important to the people? Because we are the only law enforcement that works directly for the citizens. I don't work for the commissioners. I don't work for the judges. I don't work for the prosecutor. I don't work for the governor. I don't work for the president. I work for the 128,400 people in Wood County. Now, that doesn't mean I don't work with all the above. In other words, the commissioners fund my budget. They, by law, have to fund my budget, but the better I get along with them, the better my budget is funded. The judges certainly can give me orders to do things, which I have to follow. The prosecutor is my attorney, so I'm wise to work with and listen to the advice of the prosecutor, because that way when I get sued, he's the one that has to defend me. And if he says, I told you not to do that, and I get sued, so I obviously uh, it's prudent and wise of me as the, as, as the sheriff to, to take advantage of uh, and work with the other elected officials. But when it comes to... Uh, Safety issues, different laws, uh, different things happening statewide and nationally. As the sheriff, I always look at it as what is the best for the citizens of Wood County. Not what's best for the sheriff or the sheriff's office or for whoever in government. My answer, the way I look at things, is always what is best for the citizens of Wood County. Now, are all my bosses happy with me? No. Uh, some of my bosses are sitting in the jail that I have. But... Uh, a majority of uh, the citizens hopefully like what I do, and if they like what I do, then uh, I pass my pass-fail test that I have every four years. So in 2016, I will be on the ballot, and if a majority of the voters like what I'm doing, the direction I'm going, I get a four-year contract, another four-year contract to continue being sheriff. If they're not happy with the job I'm doing, I'm out the door. That idea of the power being with the people is something that's certainly constitutionally rooted in our country, and it seems that the office of sheriff and the relationship of the sheriff to the people of the county in each counties in each state is something that's usually 
uh, brought forth in each state's constitution. So a lot of the viewers on our channel are quite interested in constitutional liberties, constitutional rights, and the the people being the basis for underpinning the rights in in America. So it's it's comes as welcome and quite as you mentioned, unique uh, news to the ears of a lot of people to hear that their county sheriff really does work for them and is accountable to them. We have had sheriffs in Ohio since 1788, and I always get people looking at me saying, well, gee, Ohio wasn't a state until 1802. Well, actually, when Ohio was a territory, we had a sheriff, and uh, when they had the ballot in 1802, when they first had the ballot, there were only two offices that the people of Ohio, the new state, voted on, and that was for governor and for sheriff. So in that role as sheriff, uh, what do you see as your primary mission? What is the mission of the, of the sheriff of any county? Well, very good. It, it was going to depend on their state because, again, the duties, responsibilities of a sheriff vary from state to state. But in Ohio, uh, as the, the Ohio Vice Code dictates what my duties and responsibilities are. Actually, it's section 311.07 of the Ohio Vice Code, and any of your listeners are certainly welcome to Google that. The very first thing it says in there is that I am charged with preserving the peace. Now, what does that mean? That means a lot of things, but uh, generally I have to make sure that I do everything I can, and law enforcement in Wood County does everything it can to preserve the peace in the county. In partnering with you in that regards, Individual homeowners are interested in peace in their domestic castle, their home. And if you could walk us through a number of factors of how people can increase the security and uh, preparedness of their home to uh, to manage peacefully through whatever may come. If you could talk, first of all, perhaps a, a few ideas about people having ways of increasing the physical security of their home. Many people have lived in the same place for many years, so they've never looked at it from the eyes of, what if I were a burglar? So look at your house during the daytime and see how many hiding places do I have. Are there a lot of bushes that are overgrown around the house? Are there a lot of trees with low-hanging branches? What, what are some things that I can do physically to trim some things up to not have hiding places? Because if someone's going to burglarize a house, they love to have hiding places. And we do have uh, daytime break-ins in the county, especially in the rural areas. Even in town, uh, people work during the day, a lot of neighborhoods are empty or virtually empty, so there's a lot of opportunities for burglars. So try to eliminate the hiding places. Secondly, uh, look at your home at nighttime. Where are the dark spots? Do I need to put a little, even a 30-watt LED light is going to illuminate enough that you're going to be able to see the shadows if someone looks at your property to see if someone is there? Some very basic things. I, I'm amazed at how many people don't lock their doors at night or how many people leave during the day to go somewhere and they don't lock their doors. I, I, I'm amazed at the people on a regular basis that tell me I don't even know where the keys to my door is because I don't use it. I don't lock it. Uh, again, different people, different comfort levels, good for them. I just, in today's world, maybe as a sheriff, maybe I'm seeing more or, or aware of things, so I'm more nervous about that. But locking doors and certainly deadbolt locks are huge. Many people still have very simple locks on their doors that are very easy to, to open. A deadbolt lock, if someone does breach it, which certainly you can breach most locks, if they do break a door in, it's going to make a lot of noise. And a burglar doesn't like to make noise, certainly not at nighttime or certainly not if someone is home. 99% uh, best number of burglars do not want people to be home or certainly don't want the person, you don't want to encounter the person living in the house. So if they go to a house that's unlocked or has a very flimsy lock, they're going to choose that home over your home if you have deadbolt locks. I also, I have in my home, I strongly encourage people to have an alarm system. I actually monitor my own alarm system through an app over the internet where I can know who's turning my alarm on and off. Uh, I even know uh, if, if there's a problem with my generator. So with this app, I not only know if my furnace goes out, but I also know if my sump pump stops working. And it's very inexpensive. When I was a child, only my perception was only rich people had alarm systems because they were expensive, they were cumbersome, they were not flexible. Today, they're much less expensive, very flexible, very user-friendly. And on my, on my smartphone, I can turn the alarm on and off uh, and monitor what's going on in, in and around my home. 
So I strongly recommend people do that, and actually you get a break on your homeowner's insurance, and because I have smoke detectors uh, tied into it, I also get a break on my fire insurance through my homeowner's policy because I have those, those systems. So uh, I highly recommend that. In my years as sheriff, very few successful break-ins have taken place where someone had an active alarm system. And what I mean by active alarm system, I've had, we've, gone, we've had break-ins, and I've asked the people, gee, why didn't your alarm go off? And they're like, well, we don't use it. <laughs> if you have an alarm system, use the alarm system, and the price of those have come down where you can get a very basic system for between $500 and $1,000 to, uh, to protect your home. So I think if you, to recap, uh, use your locks, have the good deadbolt locks, use your alarm system. Get, if you have an alarm system, if not, please get an alarm system, and look at the outside of your property, if you were a burglar, where would you hide? And not only look at it in the daytime, but more importantly or equally importantly, look at it at nighttime. One last thing I'll throw in, motion lights are very good mm -hmm. also because the uh, prospective trespasser burglar, when those lights come on, the first thing is they don't know if those lights came on because of a motion sensor or those lights come on because someone saw them. So what are some other options for monitoring if people are going to be away from home at work or if they're going to be away on vacation? as far as partnering uh, in their community with their neighbors or with the, with the sheriff's office directly? Absolutely. We, we offer a uh, free service for anyone that we are the primary law enforcement for. They can go to my website, woodcountysheriff.com, and they uh, put in when they're leaving on vacation, when they're returning from vacation, what lights are going to be on, what vehicle are going to be in the driveway. And, again, this is for a house that's vacant. Uh, they're on vacation. We, 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 we can't check the home. If you're going to tell me, well, I've got someone coming three times a day to take care of the dog, and we have uh, someone else that may be staying there, because we're not going to know, is this person staying there the burglar, or is this person staying there uh, someone that's supposed to be there? So this is for people that go on vacation where no one is checking on their home. They don't have anyone staying there. There's no one coming and going. We will literally check the property twice a day, once on our day shift and once on our night shift, and we literally have the deputy walk around the property, checking the doors, making sure everything's okay. Great visibility thing. We get a lot of comments from the uh, from the neighbors and others that notice how visible we are when we uh, uh, when we check the uh, uh, when we check the, the the property. But uh, I also strongly recommend that people get to know their neighbors. When I grew up. I grew up in a relatively small, much smaller back then, Rossford, a, a north, town in uh, the northern part of our county. Everyone knew everyone. We knew all the neighbors, and people knew when someone was out of town. We didn't have any break-ins because uh, uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mom, and they knew what their neighbors were doing. Today's world, people, many of them don't know who lives three, three doors down. They don't know who lives across the street. They don't know who lives behind them. And that's really uh, uh, unfortunate because we've lost that community of keeping an eye on each other. So if you know your neighbors, you get along with your neighbors, let them know when you're gone. Let them know how to get a hold of you if something happens while, uh, while, you're, uh, uh, while you're gone. And you also talked about when you're taking trips away from home, whether it's just uh, shopping and errands or whether it's out and about, uh, options for keeping your yourself and your family more safe when you're in public places. What are some of the, the key points you talk about in that area? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, when you, uh, in, when, and let, me, let me actually back up. When you get to a shopping center, pay attention to where you park. Uh, people go to shopping centers, and when we get into the height of uh, Christmas shopping, for example, it's dark in our part of the country at uh, 5 o'clock in the middle of December. And when you pull in the parking lot, look for a place where you're near a light. So when you leave, it may be light when you get there at 4 o'clock, but when you leave, it might be dark. So think about when I leave this place, is it going to be light? So pay attention to that. Secondly, can I see the door that I'm going into from where I'm parked? If your car is visible from inside or from that business or from other businesses, it's less likely to get broken into because, again, people breaking into cars don't want to be seen, so they like cars that are parked around the corner or maybe there aren't windows near where they're parked. So think about that. And also, if you can see the door that you're going to be going into, you'll be able to see your car when you go to leave or at least in, around the area of your car. So think about where you park, lighting, can I see the door? 
when you go into uh, your the, the store, and certainly if it's a mall or a large shopping center, pay attention to where you park. Uh, not only do we have people that uh, come to different fairs and festivals that can't remember where they park their car, and we spend a great deal of time driving them around, uh, same thing happens when people go into malls. They forget what door they went in, and now they can't figure out where the car is, and when you're out in the parking lot looking for your car, you're a sitting duck basically saying, come rob me, come take my valuables because I'm totally distracted because I can't find my car. So once you go shopping and you're ready to leave, before you leave the building, before you leave the store, get your keys out. Don't uh, do like I've seen people do in parking lots. Uh, I've seen people put their women, put the purse on the trunk of the car, fishing through, looking for the keys, the belongings sitting next to them. Again, totally oblivious to their surroundings. Uh, this is something that should have been done in the store. Before you leave the building, have your keys out, have your fob with you, and look out the door before you leave. And the reason I want you to do this is I want you uh, to, to look out that lot towards your car and see is there anyone hanging around the parking lot, uh, is there anything unusual going on or what? Now, what are some things that are unusual? Certainly, if there's a gang of 12 People sitting around there, you're going to go back in the store and say, hey, can I have security walk me out? Can you call? You know, I don't feel safe going to my vehicle. The other thing that would be unusual would be a couple in a car. And let me emphasize that. When my wife goes shopping, I hate shopping. I'd rather sit in the car, read a book, take a nap, listen to a radio show, do something, maybe have root canal versus going shopping. So it's not uncommon to go to a shopping center and see men or see a spouse sitting in the car waiting for the other person to come back out. The reason I say the couple should be a red light or certainly a caution light to something not being right, frequently there will be a couple in a car that one person will get out of the car and grab your purse while the driver of the car is one or two rows over so you can't get a good description of the car and you certainly cannot get a license plate and they run between the cars, hop in the car with your purse before you know what happened and they're, and they're gone. So when you see that couple, that should be a caution light to this, you're sitting in the car watching people should be wondering, okay, why why are they here? What's going on? Maybe I should go back in and ask for security to escort me out. Listen to your sixth sense. The reason I say that, we all know we just use a small portion of our brains. There's a lot going on subconsciously that we process that sometimes our conscience does not pick up on. So if you're going out to your car or you're anywhere, you're going for a walk around the neighborhood or you're, you're in a strange city or you're anywhere, and you had that feeling, hey, you know what? Someone's watching me. Something doesn't feel right. Something just, I'm not feeling comfortable. It's probably or possibly because your subconscious is picking up on, uh, on something that your conscious is not picking up on. So if you're out and about, time to think about maybe I ought to go in somewhere to a store or go somewhere and just kind of reevaluate why I'm not feeling comfortable. Now, in addition to these individual measures that each person can take for their personal safety or their family safety when they're out, there's also other types of upsets that can happen. Natural disasters can happen. And uh, yeah. part of the focus of our channel is about readiness for whatever might come. Uh, recently, York County, Wood County, was one of the few counties in the country that was affected by a, a nationally publicized disaster in the domestic water supply was tainted and, and declared unfit to drink. Uh, in the Toledo and surrounding areas, which affected up to some estimates, say 500,000 people for a period of days. If you can tell some specific awarenesses that were gained from that experience and in general, what types of uh, preventative or precautionary measures you recommend people should take to make sure that their family is going to be able to take care of what they need in times of disaster. 